Hey guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction, and welcome back to my channel. So today, I am gonna be reacting to one-star reviews of my absolute favorite books. All right guys, so I've been wanting to do this video for a while, and the first thing that I would like to say is no hate to these commenters that left one-star reviews. Reading is subjective, and that's the beauty of reading. So please, no hate to them at all. Um, I actually had Scott, my husband, pick out these reviews so you guys could see my genuine reaction. Uh, the editing might be a little wonky only because I don't know if he picked any reviews that had spoilers, and I'm gonna have to like edit those out if that's the case. I did not tell him not to, so that's completely on me. But anyway, I'm just so excited to do this video. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's get into these one-star reviews. All right, guys, so I have my emails and I am about to open the first attachment. I will say there is a mix of fantasy romance and romance in here, so there should be a pretty good blend. It looks like the first book we have is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass, and I'm nervous. So, first up. <sighs> okay, a fitting end would have been this book. In a grave, burning in hell, DNF at 14%. That, I mean, that, that hurt, but it, it wasn't that bad. This is the first book I've rated one star. I don't like being mean but this book does. I wish there was an option to rate a book zero. Zero stars. But I guess Mass does deserve that one star for being able to shit out their 700 ton of fluff and vomit-inducing material. Summary. <laughs> Absolutely boring. Makes me fall asleep. Uh, fluff, nothing intriguing. And recommended for people People who like dicks, literally and figuratively. <laughs> people who like romance, people who like unrealistically perfect characters. Okay, so I totally understand that A Court of Mist and Fury is not for everyone. Um, personally, one of my favorite books of all time. I love the romance in that book. I love our main character. Um, and obviously our love interest is like one of my favorite bad boys of all time. But I understand that some people will, won't enjoy this. So everyone's opinion's valid. I just disagree a lot. <laughs> All right, so next up is the Stay With Me series, and it looks like this review is just for the first book, Stay With Me, which I love. So this person says, this is one of the wackiest, worst romances I've ever read. Melodramatic and corny to begin with and totally flies off the rails by the 50% mark. So. I do see where you're coming from with this, only because I have compared the Stay With Me series to like soap operas or telenovelas. I feel like so many crazy like shenanigans happen through the course of that series, and it is a little outlandish. However, Ollie Masters is an angel. <laughs> I love him so much. I love Ollie and Mia's relationship, and just he's a little cinnamon roll angel baby. How do you not love that romance? So. Yes, I think the plot is a little scattered and all over the place and super dramatic, but also it has Ollie and Mia and I just, I love them so, so much. <laughs> all right, so this next review is for The Bonds That Tie. And I know that a lot of people have strong feelings on this book. Some people really, really enjoy it. Other people really hate it. I personally thought it was so much fun and I love a can't choose fantasy romance. So let's read this review. <laughs> So this is for the first book, Broken Bonds, and they say, DNF at around 60%. Just me, sitting here with my mind blown at the high rating for this book. I bet the teenage me would absolutely love this, would absolutely love this one, but me now just can't roll her eyes enough times, so I decided to call it quits before I get a serious headache. So I commend you for that, definitely, if you're hating a book, DNF it. Um, I need to get better at doing that. <laughs> One of the worst heroines I've ever read listened about. She's like, she's like a small chihuahua with rabies. <laughs> so immature, in no way I'm a prude, but this vocabulary of hers is just ridiculous. I'm bummed I listened to this book, so I couldn't see the count number for how many times she said 
F-U-C-K, and all other pretty words like that. No world building whatsoever made me think maybe I skipped something or was just thrown into cold water because half the time I didn't know what was happening. Well, basically nothing was happening. Okay, so you didn't like it, I get it. Um, I feel like the world building does leave a little bit to be desired, but like the main point of the Bonsai Tai series is you just fall in love with these characters. It's very a char much a like character driven story. Uh, reverse harem. I loved like all of the love interests, which typically does not happen with me. I normally really favor one over the rest. And with this, like, I just love them all. I feel like they all had such distinct personalities and I, I really enjoyed it, but I understand that it's not for everyone. The Chihuahua with rabies thing got me though. That, that was pretty good. I don't remember there being a lot of vulgarity, but also I feel like when I was reading the Bonds That Tie series, I was also reading a lot of dark romance, which also typically has a decent amount. So there might've been a lot. I really don't remember, but I'm sorry you felt that way. But still, Bonds That Tie series, I think that if you were a fantasy romance fan and you enjoyed the Zodiac Academy, I would still definitely give the Bonds That Tie a try. All right, so for this next one, my husband actually forgot to include the title of the book but I looked at the review above the one he wanted me to read, and let me just read it to you. It goes, DNF'd at 60% because I truly can't handle this girl sleeping with her uncle and cousins, let alone at the same time. So I'm gonna go off on a limb and say this book is probably Credence by Penelope Douglas. Um, I did have that on the list and it is, I absolutely love it and I totally get that it is so taboo that there's definitely people out there that are gonna hate it. Uh, the review he wanted me to read was, there's only one word to describe this book, and in all caps, disgusting. Um, I can totally, I think I keep saying this, I can totally see how someone, I feel like people are gonna not like this book. I think that you should know what you're getting going into it. It is very taboo romance. I personally, I think it's my favorite Penelope Douglas book. I love Tiernan um, and her romance. and. The only thing I kind of wish is for, I don't love the ending of the book and who she ended up with. It just felt like everything kind of got tied up too smoothly. But overall, it's still, it's such a fun book. Uh, definitely though, you have to be a fan of Taboo Romance to really like enjoy it. <laughs> this next one is for The Bully by Sophie Lark, which is my favorite book in the Kingmaker series. So this person put, Eh, this truly wasn't memorable in any way. This is supposed to be a bully romance and enemies to lovers with a mafia subplot. But it really felt like a YA book I would have read when I was in, what kind of YA were you reading as a teenager? There's some stuff that goes down in the bully. Like, I wasn't reading that as a teenager. Um, sorry, went off. Both the main characters were unremarkable in every possible way. And the mafia subplot felt super pointless and didn't really affect the story. Okay, we're gonna go back to the whole it seeming YA. I disagree, <laughs> wholeheartedly disagree. Um, also, not being memorable, Dean, if anyone has read uh, the Kingmaker series, please let me know in the comments who your favorite like love interest is. But Dean is by far my favorite. He's flawed but also like he loves so hard when he does and he just, I love him. I love Dean so much, favorite like broken hero. So yeah, completely disagree. I think, I think I just got so caught up in the YA. I didn't even pay attention to what I was reading to be honest with you. Um, yeah, no, I disagree. I thought it was so good. It is, the bully is my favorite. So my favorite in the Kingmaker series. So I'm sorry I didn't like it, but it's so good. The next up we have Crescent City One, House of Earth and Blood. So this is actually a 1.5 star review and it says, I feel about this book the way, <laughs> the way every dad feels when their child does something stupid. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I will say Crescent City, I have to like get that together. Crescent City is my least favorite out of all of uh, SJM's series so far. I will say I liked Crescent City House of Earth and Blood, which is, this is talking about, way more than I liked House of Sky and Breath. Um, only because of the end though of House of Earth and Blood. I feel like the first, more than half of House of Earth and Blood is just info dumping and like putting a world together. And it was a struggle. Like if I wasn't listening to it via audiobook, 
I don't think I would have finished that book if I was reading it physically. So I can understand how someone, if you read Throne of Glass and then you read Akatar, would be slightly disappointed by Crescent City just because I feel like the pacing was off a little bit and I feel like she's written such better books. So I kind of agree with this reviewer. Um, I wouldn't rate it 1.5 stars, but like, it's just, I just feel like that first book, until the very end, wasn't a pop, like at the level of SJM standards. But then the ending was so good. It was, it was so good. So like, it totally made up for it in my mind. So I think I still rated it like 4.5 4 stars. But yeah, I, I see where you're coming from with that review. And this next one, I actually didn't think I put on the list. So I'm very interested to see what this review says. So it is for The Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaela Smeltzer, which is the first book in her Wildflower duet. It's like an age gap forbidden romance, really good. So this person says, save yourself the time and energy and do not read this book in all caps. Oh my God, there wasn't even one solid thing I could list that I thoroughly enjoyed within this book. It's like the author thought of every single dislikable trope and was like, I'ma put every single one into this book. Jesus Christ. You really hated it. <laughs> um, I So there are things that happen in this book that are super triggering. So I definitely suggest getting, like checking the trigger warnings. Um, towards the end, there's like a very tragic event. So I think that I have seen people really love this book and really hate this book. I personally really enjoyed it, obviously, or wouldn't be on this video. Um, but I can see where people would have issues with it. Um, this is another one that is like taboo. I don't know how this person's feeling. It seems like they really hated everything about the book. Um, but it is a forbidden like age gap romance. And I liked it. Um, is it the best age gap romance ever written? No, I think there are some things that are a little problem problematic. Uh, there is cheating also in this book. So if you're not a fan of that, I don't suggest picking it up. But overall, Salem and Thayer's relationship and just I their story and their journey as a couple together, I really enjoyed. I will also say I preferred the first book, The Confidence of Wildflowers, much more than the second book. I think I only rated the second book like three stars, the first book like 4.5. So yeah, I disagree. Still kind of see where you're coming from though. And this next one is for What Lies Beyond the Veil. So I will say I loved that book while I was reading it. And I still plan on reading the second book, but now having talked to friends that I've like really insisted read it and they absolutely hating it, I do understand that the writing, it's not great. So if this person is hating on the writing, like I get it, it's, it's not the best, but overall I still really like the story. So this review says, 0 0.25, I regret the day I decided to give this book a chance. The 0.25 is because I like the name Callum. That's it. That's all I found even remotely enjoyable about the book. I need to learn how to DNF things because this was painful. Okay, so they didn't even hate on the writing. They actually have a much longer review. That was just the first like sentence. But um, I also love the name Callum. Me and my husband were just talking about that. We're watching The Dragon Prince, the fourth season, and one of the main characters is named Callum. And he's like, that's a really cool name. So really agree with you there. I love the name Callum. Um, I'm not going to read all of the reasons why you dislike this book, but I feel like you did point out some very good points. I think that if you like fantasy romance and you're okay with not focusing too much on the writing and the world building, you will still really enjoy the story. And I think that it is overly predictable in a lot of cases in terms of like the big reveal at the end. But I feel like I keep saying this. I love the relationship. I will say, I'm just going to hate on this book myself and not even read the review. I will say the main character um, is very naive. And I know that put a lot of my friends off that were reading it. I just kind of, I was okay with it just because I really like the story. I love the idea of this world that the Fae could like breach. And then it's, I thought it was very unique and I very much enjoyed it. So I still love What Lies Beyond the Veil. I'm still gonna read the next one, but I understand that it's definitely not gonna be a lot of people's favorites. All right, guys, that's it for the one-star reviews. Once again, no hate intended to the commenters. Reading is subjective, and that is what I love most about reading, is that we can all read the same book and get a completely different experience out of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you would want to see this video again. And I said this already, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.